and welcome back to our returning visitors and a big welcome hopefully to some new ones too. I'm Petra and I'm here with uh, Natasha and we are actually um, up in Newport at a friend's uh, condo so we don't have my mom's beautiful yarn background but what you can't see off camera is we have a nice view of the Newport Harbor um, but it's actually there's some traffic going by, so it's a little too noisy to record outside. So we're inside, but it's a beautiful fall afternoon. And uh, this time, instead of tea, we're drinking wine. So cheers. Cheers. <laughs> there's lots of special things about today. I've taken a vacation day. Uh, my company has a mental or a self-care uh, day once a month. Um, and today it's Friday, October 9th, and we have the day off, um, which is really nice. And... Um, it's actually the first time that I've left my state, Connecticut, since I went on vacation in February. It's the first time I've been away overnight, so it's 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 been quite an very event. exciting. It, and I I even forgot how to pack and left behind my my comb and toothbrush. Um, another reason that today is very exciting is that we have a special guest today, and we'd like to welcome. Hi, my name's Anna. I'm uh, Petra's youngest daughter, and I'm Natasha's sister. And That's I'm... how it works. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, not really a knitter, to be honest, but very honored to be on the podcast. And one of the reasons I was invited is that I am knitting something right now. It's this kind is of big a news. big deal. It's really, really big news. Um, she's not only invited because now Anna started a knitting project, but she's modeling her Ravello that I made for her earlier in the year. Yes. I think we, we mentioned it. Yeah, so I wore my Ravello in the first episode. Um, so this is with the same Shibui um, staccato yarn. Yeah, yeah. Um, my base was, my where Anna's is the purple imperial, mine was the um, teal, which I think, what was the teal called? Oh, like something Harbor, no? Mm, the notes are in our Ravelry page. And Natasha's going to add a little circle that's going to fly by. <laughs> or, or maybe just be right here. <laughs> I'll add some notes. And then the white was ivory. The teal, I feel like you begin with an R. Um, mm. So, yeah. How do you like this sweater? I love it. One thing that I really appreciate is that it's so soft. So right now I'm not wearing anything underneath it. And I have very sensitive skin. I always tell my mom who's as you know has knitted over 100 socks <laughs> um i have given her some reject socks back because they just were too itchy but this is lovely and i love the print and i think this is so cute where the stripes pop out um yeah it's one of my favorite knitted gear so anna what yeah. are you working on <laughs> <laughs> i'm so glad you asked um so well, first of all, I'd like to say that I am knitting and purling, which has been very um, impressive. My mom has told Natasha, can you believe Anna can purl? And as a matter of fact, I can purl. Um, but, you know, sometimes when I'm restarting, I get so nervous because it looks so lovely when you get it, you know, perfect purl, perfect knit. So for me to mix it up, I'm, I'm just so worried to do that. So every time I start a new round, I just have to ask my mom, is this a pearl? Am I starting with a pearl? And every time, yes, I am starting with a pearl, but I'm just trying to be very careful because I want to show off that I can also knit. <laughs> and so now, I, I, I thought oh, you were feeling, what is this? Oh, yeah. Wait, wait a minute, I thought you had finished the ribbon you're knitting now. Well, um, I decided I just was so in the swing of knitting and purling, I forgot that I didn't have, I, had, I could stop purling, but I obviously didn't want to. So Anyway, please tell us what you're making. Okay, so it's orange, it's Halloween, it's going to be a jack-o'-lantern dog sweater <laughs> for a four-pound dog. <laughs> That's a teeny Which tiny dog. Which is part of the reason I took on the project, because it's such a small knitting project yeah but you'll learn some things along the way yeah i am learning and i'm i'm starting to understand just even you know the shapes that i form um so i'm excited it's it's, it's empowering and i'm invited on the show so <laughs> that's number one and so anna do you know what yarn you're using i don't but could you tell me about it it's it's actually sheepy's um cotton blend it's a worsted weight and i think it's the stone washed the yarn company is 
um, based in the Netherlands, but I actually think this, this yarn was made in China. Oh, really? That's the thing, because um, if you watched the last episode, I did adore sheep as a child, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering, where did the sheep come from? Did they come from the Netherlands? And you're telling me they came from China? Well, wow. I hope they had a good life. Well, that maybe they well, were grown in the Netherlands and then the yarn was processed in China? Yeah, what, what, what country makes the most wool? Gosh, that is a fact that... I'll look it, up, will, look it up and maybe yeah. put it... It, it wouldn't surprise me if it's a, something like a country <laughs> like New, Ze New Zealand has a lot of sheep. It's true. Um, All right, Anna, so while you just uh, keep knitting away, we're yeah. just going to go ahead and talk about what we're working on. Sounds good. And, and Anna, don't forget to switch from rib to just stocking I stitch. Stocking, <laughs> once you finish the round, of course. Yes, I know what that's all about now. Okay. So, um, gosh, so much going on today. Today was the first clue of Stephen West's 11th mystery knit along called Strip, Stav Strip, Slip, Strip, you know what? I <laughs> Slip Stravaganza, third time. That's what wine does, I guess. <laughs> Although I haven't drunk much yet. Anyway, um, it's the first clue of stri slip stravaganza. And what I wanted to show you that I'm wearing um, the last the last year's, we, we mentioned it, I think it's the Starflake. And, you know, it wouldn't be a real Knit Ink episode without Natasha forgetting something. I was supposed to bring my Starflake here, but I forgot it. So I'll talk about it next time. But my mom obviously remembered and has hers. So we'll hold it up. And I'll just show you, I used um, <laughs> Malabrigo is the grey in Polar Moon. And it's a, it's a um, you can look up, Anna. It's a single ply, so it's pretty plump. And the, the this is Malabrigo's socket. The color's not coming out very well, but it's called Wales Road. And gosh, I've used this colorway in so many things. It, it really is one of my favorites. So this was, well, all of Stephen West's... Um, projects are, are really fun, but th this one was, there was a brioche section, but not too much, so you don't get too tired of it, and some very interesting things going on, and it's a, it's a, it's very warm, I usually just wear it wrapped around a few times, but you know what, it also looks really nice just draped at the, ba on the back of a sofa. It's so, so nice and drapey, and I love that the brioche is like kind of plump and cushiony, yeah. Um, that's what I love about mine. Mine um, actually came out a little bit smaller, probably because I knit tighter. Um, yeah. I'll pop a little photo of mine so you can see what it looks like uh, before next week. But yeah, yeah, it's really, this was a fun. Uh, knit. Yeah, he he makes fun knits, <laughs> and he's such a he's such a fun. We actually person. just we actually just watched. Um, he had a cast on party on his Instagram live, and we watched part of that just before this. And he's just so funny. He's so great. If you he's. Even if you're not participating in this year's uh, Mystery Knit Along, it's still fun to kind of check out what he's talking about and um, see see the community. I mean, it's, yeah, it's so it's cool wonderful. that there's people all over the world knitting this. And he gave some really fun facts in his um, Instagram Live. So one thing, let's see how much I remember. Okay, so of all the people, so he's done, this is his 11th year of doing the Mystery Knit Along, but years one through 10, he calculated all the people that had done all the projects through years one through 10 and how much yardage or meter, meterage, is meterage a word? It's the same as yardage. Yardage and meters that um, everyone has used knitting up their shawls. And the length can go to the moon and beyond. So I, I think it was 249,000 miles of yarn. And I'm sorry, I don't remember the meterage. <laughs> Um, but also, so Stephen's from Oklahoma, and he lives in Amsterdam, and he said that that is also the length of going back and forth between Oklahoma and Amsterdam 52 times. So he had a bunch of fun um, trivia questions about the different amount of colors used in his shawl history, and um, like what ones use the most yardage, and um, yeah, so I think he has it in his Instagram live. Um, but yeah, he's just such a great person. Fantastic and energy. Really, really he, fantastic You can learn energy. so much from his patterns. Um, he's got awesome tips and tricks that you can bring into other other pieces of your work. So if you've been living on a rock, under a rock, no offense, check out Stephen West. 
um, he is so fun. And it's not too late to join if yeah. you've been if you've been hesitant um, or you think it might be too complicated. He actually releases videos with step by step instructions yeah. that go along with the pattern. And and another thing that I do want to say, um, shout out to Stephen West is that he's kept the price of these patterns the same since I started doing them five or six years ago. Um, and, and you get so much entertainment for the $6 that he charges for the patterns. So yeah, we, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Um, oh wait, don't show anything. I should have to say spoiler, oh, spoiler alert. alert. Yes, so yes, yes. So you're going to talk about the first, so the first clue came out today. Um, and my mom has been excitedly knitting away and I watched part of the video and obviously the cast on party. Um, so do you, this is, a, this video is actually going to come out like a week Plus, from now, um, we just happen to be with each other this weekend, so we have, we're like, let's record again. Um, so hopefully, this will come out after Two Clue has been released. So hopefully, if you are participating, you um, are well aware of what's happened with Clue 1. But if not, spoiler alert, um, come back in like two to three minutes or whatever. And, we, we'll, um, we'll leave a timestamp. That sounds oh, so gosh. professional, doesn't it? That's a lot of pressure. I, I think you can <laughs> figure it out. Um... <laughs> But, I mean, it's not much of a spoiler alert because I'm still, you know, a, a small way into Clue 1. But it's this, this section on Clue 1 is called Honeycomb. So here we go. This is how far I've gotten. So my main color is Cloudberry. And so last time we talked about the Holst yarn and our excitement about that. So this is the, whole, the Holst yarn and the, the main color is the Cloudberry. One thing that I'm a little bit worried about is that the dye is actually coming off on my hands and I'm using of the dark purple just just the dark purple yeah mm. not the and so of course my contrast colors are really light so I'm really worried about mm. bleeding um so but you're not, probably not going to be um like washing and blocking like there'll be the well, first the first time. one but as opposed to a sweater I feel like you kind of block you block shawls less than you yeah, would a sweater, them, right? Yes. But yeah. So hopefully that first initial one just like pour a ton of vinegar in there. Cold and... water. So I think that I'm going to use cold, cold water. Not I usually use tepid water when I'm blocking. I'm going to use cold water and I'm going to put vinegar in to hopefully set the dye and hopefully it won't bleed. Yeah. I'll be. It'll be sad if it bleeds into this. Um, I think it, what, what the color was called. Just bleached white, right? Bleached white, yeah. So that's white. So that's white. <laughs> if so it's white, it's bleached white. <laughs> um, so I'm just in my second, almost finished my second honeycombs, okay? and mm -hmm. um, it's yeah, uh, and of, and I'm in the middle of a row, so I'm it's not quite. But you're having fun. I'm having fun, and so clue one oh. it goes for nine honeycomb rolls, rows, sorry, and it's gonna be a triangle. All right, so. I, I, I stand a pretty good chance of uh, finishing this before Clue 2 comes out next Friday. Unfortunately, I don't think I can take every Friday off work, but um, <laughs> maybe I'll have a short day so I can start working on it late afternoon. So that's my work in progress. Can I consult an expert? <laughs> you can, yes, a consultation yes. live. Oh, So I have finished the round, is that correct? Yeah, and you know what? We could have set you up with a beginning of round marker. Let me give you one right now. And because I think you're two stitches over the beginning of round to be pedantic about it. Shoot, I don't have my... Oh, oh I, I, have, I have a lot of stitch markers because for this um, Stephen West shawl, you need 54 stitch markers. Wow. So I actually went through my stitch markers yesterday. Here, let, me, let me go back. So here's, here's my... Around. Here's my stitch markers. So while, while Natasha is setting up Anna for success... Voila, I finished my Rhinebeck sweater, the Rocaine. Um, and we did our tell us, tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater video for Christy Glass. So hopefully we make it in and we made, we, we did the um, video outside the harbor here in Newport on this glorious day. So that was kind of fun. Um, I'm actually pretty warm. I'm glad I could take the shawl off, but this, this um, sweater is, is very comfy and warm. I'm just going to stand up and show you. The split hem, special button made by my lovely mummy and daddy that I put on my sweaters. That way I know which which mm -hmm. um, that this is the front. Sure. So yes, we can move on to other projects now. Yeah, and I wasn't wearing my cumulus blouse 
um, in the first episode. I just held it up, so here I am wearing it. Um, it was with the Sangez yarn silk mohair um, and the Misty Alpaca black lace, I think it was. Um, so the details are on my Ravelry page and I have some FO uh, picks up there too. So I love the fit of this. Again, it's like I knit it with a size smaller needle than the pattern, so it's a much tighter gauge, um, but it's still loose and comfy and I... I just have a tank top on. The mohair doesn't bother my arms or anything. It would maybe bother my chest, but I've got a tank top on, which is fine. Um, so yeah, that is, I guess it, it's double counting my FO from <laughs> the first episode, but it's, it's, I'm wearing it now, so it's, it's exciting. Um, and where'd you get the yarn? Oh, the silk mohair was from Norway um, on our Arne and Carlos cruise, which I feel like maybe we should dedicate some time at the end of an episode soon um, to talk a little bit about that, but that was an amazing, amazing and trip. And share some, we'd have share to share some photos. Some photos. And stuff like it that. really so, was a trip of a lifetime. For that sure. So it we'll was very, in, very, very enriching. We'll dedicate some time to mm -hmm. that soon. Um, but in the meantime, I don't have any other. I don't have any other FOs. Do you? Besides this? No, I I finished one sock. That's that counts as a hoe, doesn't it? I guess so. <laughs> um, I, I, I'll, sh I, I'll show you my half-finished object. Here, I just started working on this. Okay. You can just keep knitting now. Nice. Although, this is a bit of a cheat because last time I only had to kitchen at a toe. Um, but I did. So here is a half-finished object. These are Kia's free sock knit-along socks for September. And I I'm working on my second sock. I actually usually knit my socks toe up. Wow, you but... made a lot of progress on your second sock. Yeah, I'm on the foot. So, but these socks start with the um, cuff down and there is a left and a right. So the pattern is on the outside of your foot, this, this cute little pattern. And these, these socks I'm going to keep for me because these are my Earl Grey tea socks and I like to drink Earl Grey tea on the weekends and on vacation days. So yeah, I finished the heel and I'm on the foot and I picked out my yarn for the October Petty Harbour socks and I'll show you. So it's yarn from my stash. This is and gonna... these are, did you mention that these are Kia's uh, free sock 2020 um, knit along? So that she, she has a podcast that I'll link below, but every month for 2020, she's shared a free sock pattern. And um, my mom has pretty much been keeping up with it. So I know I need to accelerate a little bit. Um, so this is, these are gonna be, this is going to be the yarn that I use for October. And um, this this is Malabrigo sock yarn in Polar Moon. It's the same color, actually, that I used in my Starflake. Oh. But this is single ply. This is Mejita. And it's a single ply, whereas this is sock yarn. And it's got some... Actually, I don't think it Malabrigo sock does have nylon in it. I'd have to double check. But this is plied versus a single. Mm -hmm. And you can... You, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but this is much fluffier. It pills. I wouldn't make socks out of a single ply. This is a much tougher yarn because of the plying. So this yeah. is going to be heels, toes, and cuffs. And this is Araucania yarn, which is from, off the top of my head, it's, it's from South America. It's either Chile or Peru. And um, they don't have numbers. This is a tonal, a red tonal color number 17, I think. And I used it as a contrast yarn for socks earlier on in the year. So um, yeah, I'll be casting on these soon. I think most of my October knitting is going to be on the slip stravaganza, I said it, and um, my uh, free sock knit along, and, and maybe a little bit on one or two other whips. I have one whip that I need to crawl away and, and get to show you. Okay, so while you are doing that, in the meantime, I will talk about what I am working on over here. I'm in the middle of the road, but that's fine. So last time I counted my swatch as an FO um, for my dad's vest. So I'm doing the his vest. Um, that's a church mouse yarn and tease pattern. Um, and I had to do quite a bit of math to figure out what size to do for him. So I don't, another thing I forgot was my notebook with my little calculations, but from what I remember, um, so the pattern calls for 21 
stitches for four inches and um, I think it was 30 rows for four inches and I was at 18 and a half and 26. So the great thing about the church mouse yarn and tees pattern, I do want to say it is on the more expensive pattern side, side of things. It was $12 for the pattern, but there's a lot of information in there. There's information about um, swatching and figuring out your gauge, um, altering the size, um, figuring out what size you need to knit. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of helpful e details in there. I think it's like a at least a 10 page pattern because um, really? there's lots of call outs of what you can what you can read mm. so um i was obviously off by both the stitch and row count um and based on my dad's size i think so he my mom knit, knit him a vest um a couple of years ago so i was used that as a little bit of a guide um and there was a three inch positive ease difference between um, his chest size and the size of the vest you made. So I knew I wanted to have three inches of ease. Um, positive, positive ease. ease. So I, based on the stitch count that you cast on and their gauge, I figured out how many, how many stitches I need per inch. Um, and then multiplied that or did some division, did some multiplication. I'm, I know this, should, this would be really helpful information if I had my notebook in front of me. Um, but message me if you'd like to learn more about this because I can, I can do it, um, you know, if you need help trying to figure it, figure it out for a specific project. It's hard to do on the fly in my head. Um, but basically, because I didn't want to change my needle size to get to the gauge of the pattern, I um, figured out that I need to knit the first size to get the measurements for the third size. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> you, which is great for stitch count. Yeah, so but... like obviously I I knew that I would be knitting a smaller size because I had less stitches. Um, so I cast on, I've cast on for the first, uh, for the front and I've done the two and a half inches of ribbing and then just done um, some stockinette. Oh, oh yeah. I'm in the middle of a oh, row, but okay. it's fine. Um, so this is knit Gosh. back and forth and then seamed. So I, since we last saw each other, this is what I've done on this part. So I will be just cranking away on the front of this vest. Um, and yeah, it's going well so, so far. So this is your nice relaxing knitting now. Yeah, it will be until I get to like the V part. Um, and I do. then I just want to interject. Then I think it will be a little bit tricky because it's easy to compensate for a difference in stitch gauge, but row gauge sometimes can be hard, especially if in a pattern they don't tell you how many centimeters or inches to knit. They yeah. just refer to rows. So you're gonna to have to do some more calculations. Well, the great thing the about view. this pattern is they have um, row count and a schematic with measurements. All the measurements, that's yeah. wonderful, yes. So, um, and I measured dad, so I know I want 13 and a half, I want 13 and a half inches um, from the beginning of the ribbing um, to where we will break for his armholes. Um, the pattern, yeah. the pattern says 100. That sounds dangerous, break for his armholes. <laughs> I hope not. I won't be breaking any bones you're gonna or be, making you're any gonna, holes in my dad. You're going to be decreasing. You're going to yeah. be decreasing <laughs> stitches in actual fact. That that translates to decreasing stitches. <sighs> Do I just keep going? I've got my little place Oh, yeah. You just yes. flip that over to your needle. Nope. Okay. Nope. 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 Just before you put your... Oh, it has to just, go just across. Like that. Okay. There you go. And you should look up at the camera once in a while. Okay, hi. <laughs> Anna's here. She's <laughs> she's here. Getting she, away. We're squishing her. We're squishing I'm her. focused because um, I'm God I'm going it. to Pennsylvania to see my boyfriend for his birthday on Thursday, the fifteenth. If it's even the fifteenth, I'm just making a guess. Um, and I want it's not uh, going to be the fifteenth. <laughs> we'll we'll find out later. It's but um, you know, I want to try to get this done by the fifteenth. So. Oh wow. This is my time to focus. Okay. Doggy sweater, wow. Okay, so, that's exciting. Um, do you have another whip you wanna talk about or should I talk about another whip of mine? Uh, yeah, I've got actually just one more thing that okay. I wanted to share and that is my Birkin. I blocked since um, we last spoke 
and it is it's I love those really colors. really it looks so nice against bloomed. the gray. Um, so I am blending superwash and non superwashy on the the um, mini skeins are superwash that are dyed with bot botanical dyes that Natasha got me as a gift, and the gray is Rauma PT two. Um, so I got this far into the body. Um, it's still flaring a little bit and I've tried it on and I'm actually quite happy. The, the yoke is a little bit snug, but the body is, 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 fits pretty well. It's nice yeah. and loose. So what I'm going to do is work on the sleeves next because I'm, I'm going to ha have a little bit of a yarn management or yarn chicken situation, I think, because if you, if you watched our first episode, you may remember that I'm actually repurposing yarn from a sweater that I needed holding this Rama with mohair and it's it's tough to <laughs> unravel and separate yeah so I'm going to work on the sleeves this this is a little bit wide so I think I'll do some pretty rapid decreasing through here um, but if I get any spare time from keeping up with the mystery knit along and my socks I will work a little bit on this because now I'm excited to get it finished and I just love these little flowers. Yeah, they're yeah. really cute. It, it, it's incredible what a difference pre and post, post blocking makes in color work. Everything relaxed and I did give it a, a, a good, really good soak um, and um, stretched it out, drying it flat in the autumn sunshine. So that's all my projects that I've been working on in the last week or so. Cool. Yeah. I have two more whips and it's very unusual for me to have more than one, maybe two on the go. So I'm a little stressed out about it, but I'm working through it. So the first of the other uh, whips I'm going to show you is my second cumulus. So the mm. last time we, um, we spoke, <laughs> um, I was at Sorry, Anna, I'm blocking oh, you. It's okay. Oh, yeah. I was at this oh, stitch marker that I swiped off of your bag. So since then, I finished. Oh, which stitch marker? Oh, you can see it right here. Okay. So this was the first, oh, and gosh. then this was the second, and then I bound off for the body. So the bottom has this nice fluffy I-cord edging, um, and I haven't blocked it yet, so it's curling up. But my first, my first cumulus um, went flat after blocking, so this one will too. So this is the back. This is absolutely beautiful, Natasha. It's really, the, the colors are yeah. so soft and subtle, yeah. and it feels amazing. Yeah. Gosh, I really I'm, need I'm, to I'm make really one. I'm really enjoying it. So I'm, I don't know, maybe like halfway through the first sleeve. And you only started this sleeve when? Yesterday evening? Mm, yesterday. Yesterday morning. Oh, yesterday morning. I okay. uh, picked up for this. And you have a day job. Yeah, I, did, <laughs> I actually picked up for the, um, for the sleeves right before work yesterday oh, so oh okay. a couple things i want to note so one is so i'm knitting this in a needle size bigger than the pattern um so it's it, but i'm still i still have a tighter gauge um even mm. though i'm using in a bigger needle size you but are, you're a pretty tight knitter i think yeah but um i found that it was actually just a little too loose um so when I tried it on right when I split for the sleeves, I did two quick decreases on the body. So these are just stitch markers. What I did is the, this, I cast on for size two, but I quickly decreased for the first size. So the rest of my body was all in the first, um, first stitch count size. And then the second thing I wanted to bring up was um, there's for when you pick up stitches, and this can be for sweaters that are, um, bottom up or top down is I follow this YouTube video called from Suzanne Bryan and I'll link to it. But basically I think if you Google or search in YouTube, um, pick up stitches for armhole with no holes. She has a great mm. tutorial about this because I don't know about you, but I have definitely run into problems where when I've picked up, I end up having, I did, I followed her pattern, so I won't have holes, but there would be kind of right here oh, and yes. right here. So that. when you, um, when you, when you're doing at least for a top down and you put your stitch markers on your, your sleeve stitcher, sleeve stitches on placeholder yarn, you usually cast on a few, um, a few stitches that are like right under your armpit. And then you, you, you keep knitting, not explaining this very well, but Basically, when you yeah. come back and pick up, you end up 
sometimes having holes right at those points in between your live stitches and the stitches that you cast on. That's definitely happened to me. Yeah, and sometimes I use like the tail yarn to kind of weave through and close those, close those up. But Suzanne Bryan's video, um, it's she's using yellow yarn in it. Um, she walks you through how you pick these up and um, close up those holes. And I mean, the mohair fills in really nicely. Um, so I don't have them here, but if I stretch, you can kind of see where they would be. They would be like here and here if I didn't um, follow her method. Um, so I hope that helps you. Um, and again, she says it works for top down or bottom up. Um, so no matter what sweater construction you're doing. Um, so I've been doing that the past couple, probably like the past like five sweaters I've done. Um, and this is the first time I'm hearing about oh, this? Oh shoot, sorry. I thought you were the one that told me about no, it. No, in fact, how did you find out about that? I how just Googled, find... I noticed I was getting holes when I did it and um, I was like, there's gotta be a way to fix this. So I just huh. Googled it. <laughs> I, I just kind of wing it with doing um, twisted stitches or something like that. But I have noticed on one of my sweaters where it, it seems to be getting exaggerated, the holes, you know, with, with wear and washing. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll check that out as I start to work on the sleeves yeah, on, you, on my Birkin. You should I, definitely do it for the Birkin. I'm, yeah. I'm, right I'm at, sorry, I thought you knew about no, it. No, I didn't know. That's something, well, it just goes to show you, you know, this, this hobby, you just continually keep learning. And that's yeah. one of the many things I, I love about it. Um, so... I just want to check in on Anna. How are you doing? I'm good. I wonder She's if you're you... about to drop a stitch, I think. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> um, She's very so serious about her knitting. I did yes, um, go ahead, two inches of what is what was that style called when you knit? Ribbing. Like, with one, rib, one by one rib. One by one. So I did two inches of one by one ribbing and now I'm just knitting. You don't remember how many inches, do you? No, we're going to have to refer to the pattern, and I think we're going to have to refer to the measurements, the custom measurements. This is a very small doggy. It's an Athen uh, pincher. And a it's boy small or a for girl? It's, it's a girl. She's actually small for her breed. Um, she's going to be a year old in November, and um, she was so small that the original owners who were going to show her um, in dog shows couldn't because she was too small. Um, so she got sent back to her breeder, and um, my boyfriend was able to get her. Her name's Nettles. I love her. Um, she's That's cute. Name. She's very sweet, but she looks like an Ewok. Um, from, <laughs> she does. She looks like an Ewok from Star Wars. She's not, you know, she's not my style of dog. I'm an Australian Shepherd kind of girl, but this Keep is knitting. fun. <laughs> um, I think we're going to have to refer to the doggy measurement. I'm worried that this might be a bit wide. You might have to do some decreasing. But there's, yeah. there's going to be a few inches of stocky nets knitting now and then the next challenging thing is is the holes for the front okay. so just keep, just keep knitting just okay. keep knitting yeah cool. i'll keep knitting okay so um back to what i was working on back to natasha um so i had forgotten the book that i'm going to be knitting john's sweater from for the past two episodes but this time i remembered it and it's a big book yeah so it's um rescued Rescue Endangered by Design was the R.E.D. that I couldn't remember last time. So it's a really beautiful book. Um, I hope I don't hit you. You're fine. Um, it has an introduction um, by from Jane Goodall. So each of these patterns oops, focuses on an endangered animal, and there's information about the animal and um, what updates on what can be done about helping the endangered animal. Um, and then there's a bunch of different designers who have then designed a pattern, um, mostly sweaters for, for children and adults um, that are inspired by that animal. So the pattern that we chose for John that we really stuck out to, stuck out to him is called All About the Scales. And I'm just getting the page to show you what it looks like. Do, 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 do. It is a very cool book. I've looked at mm -hmm. it myself. Yeah, even non-knitters would like this it's book. It's beautiful. So, it's heavy. Okay, so this is the pattern, all about the scales, and it is by Lisa Rem Renner. Um, so, it is originally knit in with Madeline Tosh Merino Light, which is a single ply yarn. Um, so, it's obviously going to be like nice and nice and plump, but I was really worried about that pilling. 
Um, and John was looking for something a little bit more rustic. So that's why we went with the holst that I shared with you last time. Um, so I knit, I knit half a swatch maybe um, of the pattern and I don't love it. Um, mm. I, here we go. Here's the swatch. So it's like a little lacy. You can't, it's, you can kind of see if I hold it here in between us, you yeah. can see right through it. And I don't want to, it's, so I've, I've washed and uh, I've washed this and it did bloom. Um, and it is really nice and soft, but it's, um, it's, it's not quite this it's not quite the effect that you were hoping for yeah. and also it, the yarn actually might be too contrasty that's my opinion i think what makes this sweater so beautiful is that it kind of almost blends a little bit yeah and this is just so contrasty that i agree with natasha it's a bit lacy somehow yeah and i just i haven't actually shown this to john yet um because i was like Ugh! I don't know about this and I didn't want him to pick up on my reaction when I shared it with him so I needed to I needed to take a moment and process what I thought about it um I could go down in needle size mm -hmm. so I'm using size 7 needles which is the US 4 US size 7 4.5 millimeters so I could go down to size 6 and see if the tighter gauge um is more is like more to my liking so I yeah. might just do a couple rows of knitting and just plain knit and then just continue with the same fabric so I can easily compare. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be a pattern change. I, I really like this yarn, so I do want to use it. And I'm even though you guys are talking about this being too highly contrast, I think it would still be fun to do a sweater for him with these two, two yarns. So I might take a peek and see if there's another pattern that I'm inspired by. Um, if if we if I don't like the texture um, pattern um, for the size six, so not quite there yet. But you know, this is this is what happens with knitting. You don't win every time, right? Like no. I I knew that I was taking a risk by doing using such a different yarn from the pattern. And looking on Ravelry, there aren't a lot of people that have done this pattern. I think there's maybe one or two projects, maybe. No. Um, and usually, I stalk. A lot of the projects that have been done because you can really learn a lot from other people's mm -hmm. um, yarn choice and modifications mm -hmm. and I didn't have that so I guess I'm one of the guinea pigs You're trail, you're trail blazing here. <laughs> yeah um, but I still really like the sweater and the pattern I'm just maybe this yarn isn't the right choice for it um, so stay tuned um, but as far as this book um, it's it's there's so many beautiful patterns in here. Um, I'll, I'll post a link to learn more about it. Um, but like another one, the cover one is obviously really beautiful. That one is called Eyes on You. And then here's the, here's the Eyes on You with um, someone else wearing the All About the Scales sweater. So we'll see. I'll let you guys know next time if I've made any decisions. But right now, the next step is to try it on smaller needles wash and block, see if I like it then, then maybe show it, then I'll show it to John and see what his reaction is. And I'll try and be as neutral as I can when I share it with him. Um, and who knows, yeah. maybe he'll love this. Yeah, maybe he will. Um, I, I do think using maybe two sizes smaller actually yeah. might maybe make I'll a difference and, and really doing a long soak and allowing the yarn to bloom. Um, and if you don't like how it looks then, then I think getting a yarn, as, as Anna suggested, that's not such a high contrast, like maybe a slightly lighter shade of green. Yeah. If John really likes the pattern, um, but isn't sold, maybe I do another holst order. <laughs> I know, that's what I was thinking too, another <laughs> holst order. And get a lighter, because... a light green, and that could be kind of cool too. So. I must admit, I just love knitting from this 500 gram comb. It's just in some ways so ridiculous but so lovely at the same time um yeah, yeah so we'll see so that's where we are so i don't have any i have i don't have any more brain space for dream knitting right now because i'm working on th i have three whips and um usually i max out at two and um even then i'm kind of like oh so um i've gotta yes. i've gotta finish my cumulus before i really start to focus on what my next project for me will be because um, then I'm going to have two projects on the needles that are gifts. So 
Mm. kind of want something on the needles for me too. <laughs> you definitely need to do some selfish knitting. And for me, the only other thing is still um, deciding on what my November sweater is going to be. And uh, I found my, my list of um, sweaters I was thinking about for 2019. And this Rocaine actually was one was one of them so yeah I'll, I'll be thinking and going through my stash and picking yarn for my november sweater and then just to close out um we've got our ravelry page live oh, so yes. if you um want to introduce yourself there and haven't already please do so and i'm going to put the um set the stage is that the right way to say it or uh just to let you guys know we for our knit along. Um, it's we're gonna oh. start it on November first. And speaking plant of the idea. plant the seed, plant the seed. That's what wow, I was gosh, I for. didn't realize we're going to be starting November first. Yeah, I talked oh, to you about okay, this. Okay, okay. So, um, so that's more knitting to plan. Yeah. So well, mm. no, actually, the the knit along that we decided on is that's that right. it could it, we're, it's gonna be um, a treat yourself knit along from November first to December thirty first. And you can do whips or um, start new projects, but basically it can be something for yourself. So it's either a sweater you're working on, or if you are, you've been thinking about yarn that you want to purchase for yourself to make a project. Um, I know that we are approaching gift, gift knitting time, um, but I also think we need to take care of ourselves. So mm -hmm. this is an excuse to take care of yourself, whether it be just purchasing a pattern that you have always wanted to work on, um, and and start working on so whips are going to be included because it is going to be short two months but i kind of think let's just do it in 2020 so we can start fresh in 2021 and i really want to get a knit along going in 2020 for us so or some special yarn that you've been wanting to treat yeah yourself, do you have yarn yarn bag. in your stash you've been holding out for so by for the next episode i will have all of the information in a little bit more of a formal way for you guys and I'll start um, start the Ravelry thread getting ready for that too. But we'll have the official start date be November 1st. Um, but if you would like to start thinking about how you'd like to treat yourself, please go ahead. Um, there's a puppy whining. Oh yeah. We're in a friend's condo, oh, so it could yeah. be a neighbor a neighbor puppy. Yeah, I don't know I, if you I can hear this. Draft a stitch oh it's, god. Oh gosh. So it's a good time. It might be time. Well, might be time. <laughs> um, we have, so, we have to fix the dropped stitch. Um, thank you so much for watching. And we are Knit Inc. on Instagram. And yep. yeah, thanks for watching our first um, wine friendly episode. <laughs> and I'm going to need a refill. Yeah, yeah it's time good. for um, Cheers. 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 Happy Bye. knitting. Take care of yourself. Bye. Bye.